I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes till the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Now either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Taco Tuesday. I hope everybody's going to have a great Taco Tuesday day. Um, I'm going to be hitting out of here to go do some work, and then I'll be back this afternoon. Of course, keeping you all up to speed with everything that is the Cowboys while we have the owners meeting going on now in Orlando. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting here is, you know, Mike McCarthy, um, the much maligned Mike McCarthy, um, it's amazing that he's had um, 36 wins in three seasons, and he's on the hot seat. It's crazy that the Dallas Cowboys quarterback has been an MVP finalist two of the last three years, and that guy is basically ready to be run out of town. It's amazing when you look around at other teams and things. You know, people say, I wish Jerry Jones wasn't here. Here's the problem. You you have to understand, you have to take the good with the bad. What if Jerry Jones never bought the Dallas Cowboys? And I'm not here to defend Jerry Jones. But what if Jerry Jones never bought the Dallas Cowboys and never brought in Jimmy Johnson? Right? We never had those 90s years. I wish there was a way you could do this. You know, maybe we'll, I'll do like AI. I don't, I've never used AI, but asked an AI question. What the, would the Cowboys be if Jimmy Johnson was never the coach of the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones had never bought him? Would they be them boys? Would they be constantly talked about? Would they have won any Super Bowls? Because we could have been like, the New York Jets, you know, the Jets have been trying to get a quarterback for years. They've been trying to get back since, you know, Joe Namath won the Super Bowl back in the 70s. We could have been like the Arizona Cardinals with the Bidwells. The Bidwells, who were as cheap as it could be, and they looked at it as, I ain't got to put a product on the field. In fact... The more money I don't spend, the more money I'm going to have in my own pocket. So this is the problem because Jerry Jones has created this expectation, has created this buzz, has created this media storm. We're in the middle of March Madness, and the first conversation on, like, first taken things is, you know, Deion Sanders talking about his son next year and certain teams that he will or will not play for. Would you rather that you were the Atlanta Falcons? That's a real question. And that's what you have to ask if there's no Jerry Jones. So, Mike McCarthy, we got a little bit of insight yesterday from Mike McCarthy and from Stephen Jones. It sounds like we're going to the 4-3 defense, in which case a lot of the players that we had that we let go on the defense, there's a reason behind letting them go. They don't fit the system. Mike McCarthy believes in the next year jump. His thoughts are some of the young guys that we had will play better next year. They'll be able to step into the role. You know, I kind of said, you know, as we look at, I said, Dorrance Armstrong, I hope that Sam Williams, who, you know, is only like four sacks behind him in a lesser rotation, he can maybe step up to be Dorrance Armstrong. That maybe Goldston can step up to be kind of like Dante Fowler. That's not a major leap. 
that Mozzie, and this is where it's interesting because Mike McCarthy had uh, said that Luke Schoonmaker, which he was injured in OTAs last year and through training camp and kind of got, you know, stuck. This is the thing with second-round picks of the Cowboys. I don't know why. We just don't seem to have very much luck with them. But he had shoulder surgery, at least it's not the foot, this offseason, this recently. I don't know exactly when in the recovery or anything else, but he said he's had recent shoulder surgery. Mozzie Smith underwent shoulder surgery immediately. See, that's the great thing. You know, this is the thing. If To me, if you're a football player and you know you got a problem, Sooner is better than later. I know when the season's over, you want to take a break. You don't want to think about football. You know, maybe you want to go on vacation and everything else. You're not ready to start the rehab process. You want to go out and enjoy yourself a bit. But the sooner you get that surgery done, the more time you have to recover. Um, So, Mozzie, maybe it was mismanagement was the problem with Mozzie. Because Mike McCarthy had said that Mozzie Smith had off-season shoulder surgery and was going to have a lot more opportunity. Of course he is because we lost players. Smith lost some weight last season. He'll have a better plan. Reading between the lines here, guys. Read between the lines. And we'll uh, help him with that plan to keep him at the envisioned weight. So it's not so much what he said as in, the blanks that he left. He's kind of admitting he lost some weight last season. He'll have a better plan. So basically, he's when you say he'll have a better plan, the reason you have a better plan is because it didn't work how you envisioned it. And we're going to help him with that plan. So you don't know if he ended up getting into Dan Quinn's doghouse because... He looked at him and said, you're too fat. You remember, um, one of the best offensive linemen we've had in our history, Nate Newton, was let go by the commanders because they said you were too fat. He went on to the USFL and then to the Cowboys and became part of the Great Wall of Dallas. So that bears keeping an eye on, and we're hearing that he's back over 300 pounds right now. And the thing is, with young guys, the problem here is, as we go to the draft, is it's hard to have young guys come out the box playing against grown-ass men that have experience for them to be as good as them. We've been spoiled because we've had so many guys that have stepped out between Micahs and Tyron Smiths and things like that, that we just assume that immediately somebody's going to come out the box that way. It doesn't often work that way. More times than not, it takes time to get used to, you know, between ending your college season, getting ready for the combine, going through the draft, getting drafted immediately a week later, you're at the facilities with the team doing OTAs, and all of a sudden, boom, you get no rest between, and your eyes are wide open because of the speed. You may have been a great player because there's only, you know, a few great players around you and playing against. Now, everybody are those great players you're playing against. And it's a hard transition. And if this team is going to be any good this year, we're going to need a lot of these young guys to step up and take a role. And I actually feel good about some of those. At least, here's where I say, at least going through and looking and saying, okay, Dorrance Armstrong is gone. Sam Williams has already had a taste. Goldston already has a taste. They're not rookies coming out the box. This is going into their second, or excuse me, third year, third and fourth year. So they do have some time in the system and the coaching with the team and having experience on the field. They should be able to step up and do good things. Now we'll see how it all comes together. Um, I think the media will go through and they'll paint the picture maybe worse than what it may be. And you're hearing, you know, the Cowboys, oh, they might be the worst team, you know, they're not doing anything. This is the same narrative we get every year, but somehow 
we're always up to the top somehow without doing the things that they say we must do to win. Let's listen in to the talking heads this morning on, of course, the deck. This is the end of Dak Prescott's career in Dallas. We're going to be taking you down to Orlando where the coaches are all talking. Yesterday, the AFC coaches. Today, the NFC coaches. We know about this offseason in Dallas. The contract extension for Dak Prescott sort of looming over what has been a very quiet offseason for the Cowboys so far. Every offseason. He is taking up, Dak is, as we speak, more than 20% of the team's salary cap. Maybe that's the reason the team hasn't done practically anything. Just moments ago, their coach, Mike McCarthy, had this to say. Philosophically, you know, you have to draft and develop. And um, if you know, if you look at my history as a head coach, is something I'm very comfortable in, have a lot of experience in. Um, the biggest impact of our football team will will come from the players that are currently on the roster. Uh, we've got a draft class coming in. We'll continue to be in, involved in a free agency. But the, the reality of our business is the economics. I mean, you know, the economics as you, as your players grow and and as their value grows, you know, how you keep them all together is a you know, that, that's a whole another competition that goes on year to year. So it's never it's if you're progressing and the value of your players is in increasing, the economics of your football teams is never going to be the same year to year. So I get what the numbers say, but the reality of it is, from my experience, is you gotta de- you gotta really develop from within. You gotta develop right, from listen, within. I mean I'll give him credit as Mike T and Tim Hasselbeck and Bartholomew here with me this morning. And again we're gonna hear from all the NFC coaches at one time or another this morning. He's being pretty honest there, right, Mike T? He's basically saying we can't afford to do anything because we got Dak and we got C.D. Lamb and we got uh, 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 Micah Parsons. Don't expect us to get better. Yeah, I agree. Those are high-class problems to have. Anybody in the NFL would like to have those three players, so more of the money is going to lessen the players. So how do we solve the problem? Look, I was a little surprised. Like, don't get Derrick Henry. Maybe go after someone like A.J. Dillon. They didn't. But, Greeny, as you know, there's running backs in this draft, be it – Blake Corum, Jonathan Brooks from Texas, they'll find a running back, most notably at left tackle. They lose Tyron Smith. They get a guy like Tyler Smith two years ago. They could slide him out. So that's been their track record is draft and develop. I know it's not sexy this time of year, but they got to pay those players, and that's job number one. You can't let Parsons or certainly C.D. Lamb leave the Dallas Cowboys. So I understand their plan. I understand that, and no one is arguing that you would want those guys to go. What I'm saying is there's no real reason to think that if you keep the same players and just pay them more, that you're going to start getting better. And a lot of this, Tim Mm -hmm. Hasselbeck, and you and I were talking about this this morning, stems back to the fact that they've allowed themselves to get sort of over a barrel with this DAC thing, and they've never really gotten out from under that. Yeah. No, look, their hesitancy to sign Dak to a deal that, quite honestly, he deserved ended up being that, you know, turning out where they end up paying Dak Prescott so much more money. We have the graphic up there, over $55 million against the salary cap this season. And so it's basically, you know, up to Dak to, to rework a deal, which means they've got to extend him. They haven't done that yet. And because of that, it is preventing them from being more active in free agency, whether it was Derek Henry or A.J. Dillon. Look, they need a bigger back like that that's the fact that they need a bigger running back they don't have one and they haven't done anything about it and while they can do something about it in the draft that's not the only need that they have and so I think as they get older on the offensive line I think as they you know kind of are dealing with the the change at running back there are things that they probably should be involved in in free agency that they haven't been and a lot of it it stems back to the fact that you know the game of chicken between Dak Prescott and Jerry Jones Dak won that but now now I think it's costing their football team. Yeah, and and he's they played it once and Dak won it, and now they seem to be playing it again, and Dak is going to win. It's just a question of how much he runs up the score. So where does this leave the Dallas Cowboys? I, I, I have mixed reviews. When you think about Dak Prescott, his contract, and you have to ask yourself, what have we really won by playing Dak Prescott, paying Dak Prescott this money? And I know you can do a lot worse than Dak Prescott. <laughs> you think? Prescott has fallen short every time. He was Take a look at the commanders. Team. You know, you, you look at what happened in, in Kansas City and, you know, what you know, Patrick Mahomes proved by taking the money and you're going to have to say goodbye to some people. But he's continued to win Super Bowls so that, to quote Mike Tannenbaum, he's a, he's a force multiplier. We don't know about that, about that. I wonder if this building is, is split. 
saying, hey, is this, is this the best our team could be? Because you can't hit in the draft like you hit with a guy that's a generational talent like Michael Parsons. You can't find a guy that's a generational talent like CeeDee Lamb. They hit in the draft, you know, when you talk about Tyler Smith. And now you, if you pay Dak again, you're going to have to start saying goodbye to some of that talent. So if you're not going to be the most talented football team, then Dak is going to have to do more. And it is about developing your players and players taking the next step. We saw last year with Bland, right? Like, Dallas has the best of everything. They have two of the best corners in the game. They have two great receivers. They have a solid offensive line. They have two bookend defensive You can't have the best of everything. Right. But the problem is when you draft well, like they did, then the, the, the credit card bill is due. And now the credit card bill is due, and you're looking at Dak saying, okay, Dak. We can pay you. You can be the highest paid quarterback, but that's not going to be, you know, conducive to us winning football games and trying to win a championship. So I think it's some people in there that say, hey, Trey Lance is on the roster. Maybe we develop and we decide to go to San Francisco 49ers. Right, that always where We have a great team with a lot of talent and a quarterback that may not be the best, but we get more from everybody else because Dallas was San Francisco first. They found the third round or fourth round quarterback in Dak Prescott, and they were able to spend money on luxury goods outside of him, mm -hmm. and it still has yielded mixed results. Right, and the, the, the 49ers whoa, whoa, took whoa, it, have whoa, taken whoa, it a lot whoa, farther whoa, in the playoffs, whoa, even whoa, if they haven't whoa, wound up winning it. Whoa, whoa, that's some bullshit. That, oh, wait a minute. I got to back that up. Hold on. Trying to win a championship. So I think it's some people in there Dallas say, hey, was San Francisco. Maybe we develop and we decide to go the San Francisco 49ers route where we have a great team with a lot of talent and a quarterback that may not be the best, but we get more from everybody else because Dallas was San Francisco first. They found the third round or fourth round quarterback in Dak Prescott and they were able to spend money on luxury goods outside of him. Mm -hmm. And it's still the what luxury goods? What luxury goods do they spend on? They didn't. No, 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 no. See, this is the bullshit. This is the bullshit that you're getting right now. Okay. This is the bullshit that you're getting because San Francisco did. They went out. They got Christian McCaffrey. They went out. They got Hargrave on the defense and things. Okay. They went out. They kept their Debo Samuels when he, when he wanted to get paid. They're, they're working on keeping Brandon Ayuk. Cowboys didn't do that stuff when Dak Prescott's cap number was $68,000 for three seasons and then was only $2 million. That's it. They didn't do it. See, you're, you're, you're getting revisionist history from these guys. Let, let's go on. This is bullshit. It's yielded mixed results. Right, and the, the, the 49ers took it, have taken it a lot farther in the playoffs, even if they haven't wound up winning it all. So, Mike T, quickly, have they fallen behind? That The Eagles made a lot of big, splashy moves. Has Dallas Ab fallen behind in their own division? Absolutely. I think Saquon Barkley makes Jalen Hurts healthier this year. And what we saw last year with Lamar Jackson coming down the stretch, he was healthy, and Baltimore had a great year. I think Jalen Hurts was himself a year ago. I think Saquon Barkley is a difference maker. And right now, as you said, Greeny, Dallas held, held serve. Philly got better. It was close. I give Philly the decided edge for the NFC East. Me too. Okay, so again, we'll be hearing from all these coaches in the NFC all morning long, and as they speak, we'll be playing you what they're saying because so many big decisions around the league being reacted to this morning for the first time. In the meantime, we have one more enormous story from yesterday, and I assume you know what I'm talking about. This is the Shohei Otani story. The Dodgers star pitcher yesterday meeting with the media okay. and saying we, definitively... We can end right there. But see, this is the thing that you get. This is the thing that you get because, you know, I, I know people are looking at that 50... Oh, my God, $59 million for Dak Prescott. $59 million, man. He's overpaid. But when you take the first four seasons of Dak Prescott's career, and he only made $4 million, here's what I want you to understand. What I want you to understand is, in all of the years that the Cowboys have had Dak Prescott, they had one year where it was over a $30 million cap hit. One. And that was the franchise tag. So this whole thing and narrative that um, Dak Prescott is the problem, why the Cowboys haven't done anything, of the years that he's been here, eight years, only two have been over $30 million. 
680, and 31. If the Cowboys were going to add talent, they've had the opportunities where the quarterback was not getting paid anything. This is the bullshit narrative that they're speaking because Jerry Jones has built this media frenzy and so on. And now, of course, everybody's saying, well, Dak Prescott's got to prove that he's worth that. I'm sorry. I didn't see Justin Herbert have to prove that he was worth $51 million. I didn't see Daniel Jones have to prove that he was worth $40 million. I didn't see that, you know, Kirk Cousins had to prove that his uh, Achilles tendon was healed before getting his $45 million um, and having made almost $300 million in the NFL. It's kind of crazy, I'll be honest with you. But, hey, that's the monster that Jerry Jones has built. Hope you have a great day. It's time for me to go to work. Peace out.